Abbott, what time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. Costello Show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood tonight for your listening pleasure with Susan Miller and the music of Matty Malley. Hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Luke Costello. Hey, where have you been? Oh, I've been hanging around the bars all day. I've been in every candy store in town. You idiot. There are no bars and candy stores. Old Nick candy bars? <laughs> well, I'm going to the old Nick myself tonight. Oh, so la mia. Oh, so are you. Oh, so la mia. And so are you. Be quiet, Abbott, and don't interrupt me. I'm taking a single lesson. My teacher says when I'm finished, I'm... My singing teacher says I'll be Nelson Eddie, Tony Martin, and Frank Sinatra all roll into one. You will? I'll be a <laughs> loaf of shortening bread with curly hair wearing bobby socks. <laughs> How can you be a singer? There's no, there's no music in your family. Oh, no? For your information, my Uncle Mike made a fortune with the bell song. Was he a singer with the Metropolitan Opera? No, a good humor man on Route 66. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, Lou, to be, to be a good singer, to be a good singer, you've got to sing with pear-shaped tones. Pear-shaped tones? Yes. The tone must come out of your mouth in the shape of a pear. Which end first? Where... <laughs> I'm talking about pear-shaped tones. Do you sing with pear-shaped tones? I don't know about pear-shaped tones, Abbott. But when I sing Apple Blossom Time, it comes out fruit salad. No. <laughs> it's something you never sang in public in your life. Oh, you don't think so, huh? No. Well, I did so. I once sang an opera. Carmen. I carried a spear and hit the highest note ever heard. Uh, how did you do that? I wasn't the only one carrying a spear. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're in for some real laughs with our zany stars tonight, but before they continue, listen to this. Costello, what's the idea? What's the idea of wearing those horn-rimmed glasses? There, there's nothing wrong with your eyes. I know, but I think they help my appearance. And before I got these glasses, when I walked down the street, everybody would say, "There goes that stupid-looking Costello." And now, what do they say? They say, "There goes that stupid-looking Luke Costello wearing glasses." <laughs> <laughs> well, just look at you. you. You know you're a mess. How'd you get all that paint all over your suit? Well, I saw a pole out in the alley with a sign on it, and I climbed up the pole to see what the sign said. What did it say? Fresh paint. Fresh paint. <laughs> Fine. Well, you'd better take that suit over to my Uncle Herman at the uh, Kirk Dry Cleaning Plant. Dry Cleaning Plant? What's your Uncle Herman doing there? Well, uh, this is Wednesday. He's dying today. That's terrible, Abbott. I didn't even know he was sick. Oh, he isn't sick. He's dying. He's dying and he isn't sick? Uh, that's right. If he was sick, he couldn't die. Why not? Well, it's against the rules of the cleaning plant. You mean they wouldn't let him die if he's sick? That's right. If a man's sick, they, they won't let him into the place to die. What do they do? Leave him out in the alley? Oh, no, 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 no. He can't die in the alley. He can't? No, if he wants to die, he has to, to go up the seventh floor. He's got to die on the seventh floor. Why, certainly. <laughs> Is there any elevator in the place? No. The nerve of the people. What do you mean? Making a poor man climb seven floors to die. Why don't they send him home? Because his wife won't let him die in the house. Wife don't? She, she don't want him dying in the house. 
you don't? No. He might as well go crawl under a rock. Imagine a guy can even die in his own house. No, no, no. If there's any dying done to be down around the house, his wife does it. Well, uh, huh? <laughs> I'll make myself clear. If there is if there's any dying to be done around the house, his wife does it. What are you laughing at? It was funnier the other way. <laughs> you, you mean his wife has got to die too? Certainly. Abbott, what are you trying to do? Bump off the whole family? Don't keep quiet. I'm going to bring Uncle Herman to my house to die. Oh, he couldn't die at your house. And why couldn't he die at my house? Because you have no die. You gotta have die to die? <laughs> Costello, will you pay attention? I'm trying to tell you that Uncle Herman has to die so he can live. Well, naturally. I mean, F, F, F. <laughs> what was that? I said my Uncle Herman has to die to live. If he doesn't die, he can't eat. You mean he eats after he dies? Well, certainly he dies for a while, then he eats. Then he dies again, then he eats some more. It must be the food that's killing him. <laughs> You're backstage. No, 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 you idiot. A man has to eat if he stands up all day dying. You mean he has to stand up to die? Naturally. Did you ever hear of anybody lying down to die? All the people I ever knew. Look, Costello. He they can't... used the standard way. No, 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 no. He can't lie down on the job. He's got to be through dying by six o'clock. If he dies after six, he gets time and a half. gets paid for dying? Oh, sure. It's piece work. He dies a piece at a time? <laughs> Look, you idiot. When I say Uncle Herman is dying, I don't mean that he is dying like a person dies when he dies. I mean he's dying for a living, and a person that dies for a living is living even though he's dying. Hey! <laughs> when you say that Uncle Herman is dying, you don't mean that he's dying like a person dies when he dies. You mean he is dying for a living, and a person that dies for a living is living, although he's dying? Now you've got it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Well, it's Susan Miller. <laughs> Hello, Susan. Where have you been all week? I'm really working on a Western picture over at Republic Studios. Oh, I used to work in those Western pictures. I used to work for Roy Rogers, but they fired me. Why? One day I forgot to tune his guitar and the Indians killed him. <laughs> <laughs> you talk sense, Castella. When are you and Susan going to get married? Well, I'll tell you. As soon as I find my place, I'll tell you. <laughs> I think Susan and I are going to get... <laughs> All right, folks. I got it. I got it. Well, as soon as I earn enough money. <laughs> Am I going too fast for you, honey? <laughs> Who talks next? Uh, as soon as I earn enough money. Now, that line isn't that funny. <laughs> Wait a minute. But Lou, seriously speaking, money isn't everything. Lots of people get married without money. Do you know what I was getting when I married my wife? No, and I bet you didn't either. I... <laughs> no, but really, Bud is right, uh, Costello. What do you want with money? Money won't buy happiness. Money won't buy love. And money won't buy health. And money won't buy contentment. Just give me the money, kid. I'll do my own shopping. <laughs> Don't forget, money talks. Money talks. Hasn't said much to me lately, but it talks. <laughs> These days, you can't hold on to it long enough to start a conversation. <laughs> but I'm going to do what my Aunt May did. I'm going to wait for my ship to come in. Did your Aunt May's ship come in? Aunt May waited for her ship to come in for 40 years. Then her pier collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> pay, pay no attention to him, Susan. You know, you look so sweet tonight, Susan. I, I, I'd like to give you a great big kiss. Well, uh, wait a minute, Abbott. Why would a young girl like Susan want to kiss you? Costello, I've been kissed by girls that wouldn't even look at you. So what? I've been kissed by girls that wouldn't look at me either. <laughs> Susie, <laughs> can I come over to your house tonight? I should say not, after that trick you pulled last night. What did you do, Susan? Well, I bought my mother a new pair of bloomers, and Costello opened the box and put a rabbit in them. How did your mother find out? She had to chase those bloomers all the way to Wilshire Boulevard this morning before she could put them on. <laughs> so long, Petso. <laughs> oh, uh. You know, I wouldn't blame Susan Miller if she never went out with you again. You're too selfish. You spend all your money on yourself. Why, you spent over $300 this week. Uh, what did you do with all that money, Lou? Well, I haven't got an automobile, and I have to take a streetcar. 
streetcar here and a streetcar there. Now, wait a minute, just a minute. How can you spend $300 in one week riding streetcars? I forget to take transfers. I... <laughs> Come in. Good evening, gentlemen. I'm lawyer Mellonhead, and I have the pleasure to inform you, Mr. Costello, that you're in line for an inheritance of $800,000, left to you by your great-great-grandfather, Diamond Jim Costello. Wait a minute, Costello. This, uh, this doesn't sound right to me. Where did your great-great-grandfather ever make that much money? He invented a cake of soap with a hole in the middle. Well, what good is a cake of soap with a hole in the middle? That way you never have a piece left over. I... <laughs> Melonhead, Costello's great-grandfather's mm. will was probated 75 years ago when the old man died. Yes, and that's when I started my search. But I wasn't born 75 years ago. No wonder I couldn't find you. I... Oh, that's it. Well, furthermore, I have a point of law to establish here. The money was left to the oldest grandson. Now, in looking up the records, I found that you, Costello, were a twin. And I just couldn't believe it. And why not? Well, I took one look at you and I said, there can't be another one like him. <laughs> No, Abbott, this guy's a phony. How dare you? I'm an expert on wills. All my life, Costello, all my life, I've been searching for missing heirs. And from the looks of your shiny dome, you never found any. <laughs> Costello, you never told me that you had a twin brother. Oh, yes. My mother christened us Louie and Dewey. <laughs> but we don't talk about Dewey. <laughs> He got my mother into a lot of trouble. When he was six months old, Mom was taking him from Patterson to New York, and at the state line, they arrested her. She was carrying your brother, Dewey, and they arrested her? Mm, they claimed she was smuggling dope. I... Ah, <laughs> uh, huh, Costello! You know, I've looked up your brother Dewey's record. It's true, he started out in life as a dope, but he studied hard, and in a few years, he became an idiot. Not satisfied, he forged ahead and became a moron. Then he studied harder. Soon he was an income poop. And then, after years of diligent study at the age of 21, your brother Dewey became the world's first schmo. <laughs> I think I should be proud of him. But what has that got to do with the will? Well, Dewey has filed a claim to the fortune. He says that he is the older of the twins. Oh, no, no, that's a lie. And I hope I can prove it. I was born 10 minutes before Dewey. That money is mine. Mine, you hear me? Mine! That money is mine! 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 All right, all right, don't get excited. Don't get excited. The award was a little too late for me. <laughs> that money was mine! Ouch. Melonhead! <laughs> Hand it over. You better not so fast. I must have definite legal proof that you are the elder twin. Oh, that's easy. Costello has his birth certificate. That will prove his age. Very well, Costello, here's my card. Bring your birth certificate to my office, and it proves that you are older than your twin brother, Dewey. I will give you the legacy. Why can't I have the money? I already got a legacy. You got a, you've got a legacy? Certainly, I've got two legacies, two arm machines, and a couple of hippocies. Oh. <laughs> Dog sense, Costello. Come I don't on. Think I got a legacy to stand on. Yeah, well, yes, but uh, we're gonna go. We're going over and get your birth certificate. Come on. And there's a lot more mad stuff still to come. But right now, a change of pace to let you hear this. Miller, our singing star, joins Matty Malnick for the cleverest set of lyrics ever written about those three little words. I've 
just written a love song It's got everything A simple sort of a ditty Anyone can sing Now there's a chance that you might think My love song is absurd But whether or not you like it I'm in love, 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 I'm in love with you. I'm in love, I'm in love with you. Costello, we've turned the house inside out, and you still haven't found your birth certificate. Remember, your twin brother Dewey has already presented his claim to the fortune. He says he's the oldest, and unless you can prove he's wrong, you'll lose your inheritance. You've got to find that birth certificate. All right, Abbott. Hey, look. Here's the old vest I used to keep my birth certificate in. I just looked in the pocket. What do you think I found? Your birth certificate. No. The hole I must have lost it from. <laughs> Wait a minute. It seems to me you used to keep all your important papers in your back pocket. Can't be there, Rabbit. Look at that big hole I got in the back of my pants. Nonsense. There's a hole in the back of your pants. Why can't I see your underwear? I also got a hole in my underwear. I... <clears throat> <laughs> Yeah, dummy, we've got to find that birth certificate, Lou. I don't know where it is, Abbott. I've snooped all over the house. I snooped in the kitchen. I snooped in the blonde's apartment next door. I snooped in the cellar. I snooped in the blonde's apartment next door. Then I snooped in the attic. Then I snooped in the blonde's apartment next door. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait wait a minute, wait a minute. Why did you keep going back to that blonde's apartment? Do you think you lost it there? No, but do you know a better place to snoop? I... (laughs) Costello, this is serious. Think, think, please. Where did you put that birth certificate? I got it. I got it. I left it in the pocket of my pink shirt that I sent to the Chinese laundry yesterday. Well, that's good. Now, come on. We're going to get that shirt. Here it is, Abbott. Lum Fung's Real Chinese Laundry. Come on in. Hello. You got a ticky? No ticky, no sake. Uh, wait a minute. <laughs> I thought it was uh, no ticky, no shirty. Oh, this week, a running special. No ticky, no sake. <laughs> Are you Lum Fung? Lum not here, me Abna. I... <laughs> I, I don't like this laundry business, Abbott. I once opened a hand laundry, but I nearly starved to death. There's no money in a hand laundry. Why? Most people wash their own hands. Oh. <laughs> Stop, sense. Mr. Fung, where is Costello's laundry? Oh, him a laundry be lady a flighty. Oh, well, we don't care if it's, uh, if it's ready or not. We just uh, we want to look through his shirts. Costello left something important in his pocket. Oh, we know what shirt are here. This real Chinese laundry. We send all shirts to China. <laughs> you mean you sent my shirts to China? Oh, yes. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Look, Mr. Fung, uh, I, got, I got to get that shirt right away, even if I have to go to China for it. Oh, very good. You go to China. He is address of a home office in China. Oh, bye. Oh, bye. Well, Costello, the China clip leaves for Hong Kong in an hour. I hope that laundry has your shirt with your birth certificate in. Isn't it exciting, Costello? We're going to China. Gee, maybe I'll see my cousin, one long Costello. <laughs> He's in a silk business in China. He started in business with two silkworms. They made six pairs of silk stockings a day. Then he got an idea. Now they make a thousand pairs of stockings a day. How did he do it? He made the worms, partners in the business. <laughs> then he tried to corner the market by getting his hands on every pair of silk stockings in China. But he got arrested. How? The last pair he got his hands on, there was a girl still in them. Right. <laughs> now he's living in Burma. He's a big man in Burma. He works for a shaving cream company in Burma. Which one? Barbasol. I... <laughs> You idiot. You know nothing about the Orient. Oh, I do so. I, I used to make dates with a rickshaw. A rickshaw. A rickshaw is a long, skinny thing that you drag around and 
Takes you hours to get any place with. That's her. That... <laughs> well, maybe we'll see your cousin while we're in China. <laughs> I hope so, Abbott. I got a great idea for him. I'm going to get him to cross silkworms with garter snakes. What for? So we can raise silk stockings that will stay up by themselves. <laughs> Has your cousin been uh, in China long, Lou? Yeah, he's been there since the days of Marco football. No, you mean uh, Marco Polo. This was before he learned to play polo. <laughs> oh, forget about that. Now, if we're going to China, we may run into a heavy rain. A monsoon. What would a monsoon be doing in China? A monsoon is a Frenchman, like Monsoon Bouquet. No, 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 no. no monsoon Chalevier. No, 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 no. That, that's Monsieur. Monsieur is a guy that works in a Turkish bath, like a Swedish Monsieur. Oh, Costello, that's Monsieur. Monsieur. Monsieur is what I got in front of my house. All my water runs down Monsieur. <laughs> no, I can hardly wait to get to China, but I want to see them Chinese play baseball. Where do the Chinese play baseball? Ain't you never heard of the Yangtze Stadium? <laughs> Pretty good, eh? I just threw that one in. I should have thrown it out. Yeah. Uh, come on, Costello. Just got time to make the China Clipper. Hey, we're stuck, Costello. There's not a seat left on the China Clipper. I just spoke to the ticket clerk. Well, uh, let me handle it. <clears throat> What's this? Go ahead. You, clerky? Me, Charlie Chen. Me must get to China. Very, very important case. Why, right, gee, Charlie Chan, the great detective. Uh, have you solved any big cases lately? Me just solved case of blonde bubble dancer who shoot husband. Yeah, I read about that. She claimed that she couldn't have shot the gun because she was holding on to a bubble with both hands. She used her bubble as her alibi. How did you solve it? Me see through her alibi. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what me, case are you on now, Mr. Me, Chan? Me. Oh, me, me. Me? Oh, yes, me working on case of man who steal locomotive from Santa Fe Railroad. Tell me, do you know where he's hiding? No. But the first time he goes for a ride, brother, will we nail him? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Chan, here's your ticket. China Clippin already on runway six. All <laughs> aboard for China, Cucamonga, Anaheim, and Azusa. Oh, wait just a minute. If the plane is going to China, why are you hollering Anaheim, Cucamonga, and Azusa? It gets last on other programs. <laughs> <laughs> Costello, it's a long trip. Are you sure Are you sure you're not afraid to fly to China? Me afraid? Why, I come from a family of flyers. My grandfather was a commercial pilot for 75 years. And no. 75 years ago, he was a commercial pilot. Now, they didn't have planes 75 years ago. No wonder he was always out of work. <laughs> well, come on, we're off to China to find your birth certificate. Think of it. You're going to be rich. All aboard! Look what the bell brought. Welcome to China, gentlemen. I am the dragon lady. I am Costello. And I like what your dragon lady. <laughs> Be careful, Costello. These almond-eyed women are beautiful, but they're dangerous. Just look at her eyes. Yeah, she's got slants in her glance. <laughs> Abbott, she's gorgeous. Ah, so you like me, little fat one? You're beautiful. <laughs> it is natural for you to like me. After all, you know, you are a man, and I am a woman. Funny you should mention that. I noticed it the minute I came in. <laughs> Little fat one, may I be of service to you? What is your pleasure? Playing pool? <laughs> but after seeing you, I think I'll give it up. <laughs> Miss Dragon Lady, we have come all the way from America to get a shirt for Costello. Sorry, we don't make that size in China either. <laughs> Try Omar the tent maker in Persia. They <laughs> sent this shirt to, to the laundry, and the laundry man told us he sent it here to be laundered. Oh, was it a pink shirt with white buttons and initial LC on the pocket? Yes. I didn't see it. <laughs> but my brother did, and he told me to tell you that your birth certificate was not in the pocket. How did your brother know I was looking for my birth certificate? My brother is your head writer. One dumb pun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, Abbott, now I remember. I didn't leave my birth certificate in my shirt. I left it in a blue suit I sent to the cleaners. You idiot. Come on, we're going back to America. Honorable Costello. Yes, darling. Before you leave. Yes, dear. Allow me to kiss you goodbye. You do every week. Why not now? <laughs> my line says, please do. I will give you a real Chinese kiss. It will make your hair fall out. That I intend to see. Come here. Hey! Castello, say something. Abbott, cable my mother that Baldy won't be home. <laughs> Come on, Castello. We've just got time to make the China Cooper back to America. <laughs> Well, Costello, are you sure this is the place you left your suit with the birth certificate in the pocket? Yes. This is it, Abbott. See the sign? Genuine French dry cleaners. Ah, ah, monsieur, s'il vous plaît. What can I do for you, eh? I left the suit here last week to be cleaned, and I left something in the pocket, and I'd like to get the suit. Oh, but the suit is not here, monsieur. The suit is not here? Oh, no. This is a genuine French dry cleaner. We send all these suits to Paris, France. Oh, oh this is terrible. This is atrocious. This is unbelievable. Uh, could I say something? Yes. This is the Abbott and Costello radio show. The boys will be back for a curtain call in just a few seconds. The time it takes to tell you this. Here are Abbott and Costello with a final word. Say, say, Costello, you never told me that you had a twin brother. Oh, yes. Dewey and me are twins. I ain't seen him since we were babies. Did you uh, look alike? Yeah, we were as much alike as two peas in an old tin can. You mean two peas in a pod? We were so poor that we couldn't afford a pod. Oh, good night, folks. Good night, good night, everybody. In Patterson. <laughs> Listen each Wednesday night at this time for another great Abbott and Costello show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood by Charles Vanda and featuring Susan Miller and Matty Malnick's orchestra. This is Michael Roy saying goodbye until this same time next Wednesday. Be sure to stay tuned for the outstanding entertainment which follows throughout the evening on this ABC station.